Hello, my name is David. I'm the literacy educator at the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. Thank you so much for joining Storytime with the Carl, our weekly read aloud series. This week, we're reading We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. Big thanks to Ryan and Disney Hyperion for giving us permission to share this book. This is a really silly book about a dinosaur named Penelope, who we see on the cover. And what is hanging out of Penelope's mouth? Is that a shoe? What has Penelope been eating? Her classmates? Let's find out. On our end papers, we see lots of really cool drawings of dinosaurs. And on our title page, we see that dinosaur that we saw on the cover, Penelope. And Penelope is saying, Hey kids, you will never be eaten by a T-Rex. They are extinct. I promise. What does extinct mean? Yeah, it means there are no more dinosaurs left on this earth, right? So they can't eat us, right? Nobody's gonna eat you. I promise, and Penelope promises, this is not a true story. Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was very important. We can see Penelope playing in her room with all her dinosaur dolls. And there's Penelope's mom coming to check in on her. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. Finally, the big day came. There's Penelope walking to school with her mom. Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were... Hmm, you think they're gonna be dinosaurs? Let's see. One, two, three. <gasps> Children! All of her classmates are children. She's the only dinosaur. Oh, where did all the kids go? So she ate them because children are delicious, right? Penelope Rex said Mrs. Noodleman, we don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. Oops. There they all are, on the rug, covered in dino slime. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day.
she tried hard to make good friends. There she is at the bottom of the slide waiting to catch the kids in her mouth. She finger painted some of her best work. Oh, what did she draw? Oops, sorry. She drew ah, a dinosaur eating a child. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. You can sit here on my plate next to all the other things I like to eat. Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends but her. There she is playing with blocks on her own and sitting on the rug on her own. How does Penelope feel? Yeah, sad. It was lonely. When she got home, her dad asked about her first day at school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked. Did you eat your classmates? Well, maybe sort of just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are the same as us on the inside, uh, just tastier. Mm, that gave Penelope a lot to think about. There's Penelope lying in bed thinking. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. But poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Mrs. Doodleman, Penelope ate William Amato again. They were all afraid of her. except Walter. Who was Walter? Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? Asks Penelope. She's sticking her finger into the fishbowl to play with Walter. Chomp! Oh no, what happened? Eee! cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Wah! Oh no, Walter bit Penelope. Ouch! That really hurts. There's Penelope with a Band-Aid on her finger. Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. She's deciding she's not gonna eat them anymore. She stopped eating her classmates. Even when Cece Weinman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon, Penelope made friends. Oh, she's playing hide and seek on the playground. Where is she? Oh, 
under the slide. Found you. Want a brownie? I help make them. Penelope's feeling better, right? Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter, the goldfish, stares right back at her and licks his lips. Because dinosaurs are delicious. Oh no, there's Penelope running away, pretty scared, but look. Her friends are there to help her and tell her it's going to be okay. And on our back end papers, we see even more cool drawings of dinosaurs, like we saw on the front end papers. And another super cool thing about this book is that there's a surprise hiding underneath the jacket. Should we take off the jacket and see what's there? Let's count to three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, what do we see on the cover underneath? Oh, yeah, it's Penelope's box of apple juice. But who's drinking it? Oh, Walter the goldfish is drinking it through a really long straw. That's a really silly story, right? Because dinosaurs don't go to school with people, right? Dinosaurs aren't really gonna eat us, right? So it's kind of a made up silly story, but I love how there's a really important message told in this silly story, right? To treat others the way that we want to be treated ourselves. And there are a lot of real feelings in this book too, right? At first, Penelope has a really hard time making friends, right? And then she realizes that it really hurts when, when she gets bitten and she learns how to become a better friend and play with her friends instead of eating them, right? So a silly story with a really important message, I think. Now, the creator of this book, Ryan T. Higgins, uh, just came out with a brand new book in his Bruce series, uh, which I love. And this new book is called Spring Stinks. And if you want to learn more about Ryan T. Higgins and how he comes up with ideas for his stories and creates the artwork for his books, you can check out our We Heart Books and Art interview with him. Um, on our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in telling more stories about dinosaurs, whether they're real or imaginary, uh, you can visit the Carl's website to find out more about lots of upcoming virtual programs that we have celebrating a new exhibition, Dinosaurs Inside Out, making a book with Roxy Monroe. On behalf of everyone at the Carl, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your stories. We hope you'll join us for our next story time. In the meantime, be well.